Now, the ratios really play an important role in the financial market just as they do in nature, as we said. Price has an uncanny way of respecting Fibonacci ratios, often very precisely. So we can take advantage of this fact. Now, one thing I have always believed in, and I can prove it to you, that price action is never random. There is what we call a method behind the madness. Every wave leaves behind the clues for the next move. You can use a previous action to determine the anticipated or expected price movement, which in a sense isn't what we are doing for the Fibonacci ratios. Right? Let's just go over the charts. Well, well okay, well, we have some comments. Just give me a moment. Well, yes, Sarah, absolutely. Take it as you want. It's the question of the skeptics will not take any piece of evidence and the believer will grab at straws. It's always the case. For me, I put it down very simply. If it works for me, I'll use it. The fact is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I make good trading. Today I make a living out of it. I have managed accounts. I, I trade other accounts. We have done started managing accounts and we are doing fantastic. We are really doing very well, giving great returns. Most of my trading systems are based on Fibonacci. So if it works, I'm just here to tell you how it works for me and I hope that it can work for you also, but it's different for every different person. Let's get to the charts. And when I say every wave leaves behind clues, what do we do in Fibonacci ratios? The simple ratio of your retracement, what is a retracement? Right? Let, let's assume that this is the down movement, or let, let's take the latest price movement. Right. This is what it is. I would probably use a Fibonacci retracement, which most traders do, from the swing high down to the swing low, expecting or plotting levels of resistance where price is expected to find resistance with the standard values of 38, 50, 61.8. In a sense, what we are doing, we are using the previous wave to give us clues for the next one. Right? That's what we are doing. So we are using the previous wave. Now, there is always a way to use it. Fibonacci's are important, but let's just go over some basic ground rules. Now, this is really the key. A lot of traders, believe me, even experienced traders I've come across, do not really follow these. But this is very simple. It's just the way the FIBs should be used. The first and foremost is your FIBs should always be plotted from the left to the right of the chart. Now, let's get back to this, what we mean by this. If I'm, um, let's just zoom this inside a little bit, right? What I'm looking at currently right now is this wave. As a trader, I need to know whether this is going to continue to the upside or has it found resistance somewhere and is it going to turn towards the downside? That's what I need to know as a trader. Am I going to go long on this? Am I going to go short on it if I want to take a trade? So obviously I'm going to be using the previous wave to determine expected levels of resistance. Always plot your FIBs from left to right, meaning if I start plotting my FIBs from the left hand side, obviously this swing high becomes a first point, and on the right side the swing low becomes a second point. So I would plot my FIBs from high to low to give me expected levels of resistance. Let's take for example this particular move. If I was or I wanted to trade this move, I would be using this previous down up wave, this wave, to determine if I'm trading the FIBs from left to right, my swing low comes first and the swing high comes second because we are using the direction left to right. So I would plot my FIBs from low to high to give me expected levels of support, whatever levels, FIB levels of support they come. But this becomes a key because I have seen traders plotting the FIBs, like even if I'm looking at this particular wave, right? I'm looking for this down wave. I can see them plotting FIBs from this swing high down to this swing low, which is not the way it works. Unfortunately, I would say, unfortunately, Fibonacci's price tends to respect the FIBs across all time frames and across all zones. So you may get some good levels, but they are not the correct levels. So remember the first thumb rule, left to right. The second thumb rule is they should be always plotted on pivot points or 
swing points. You must visually identify the points from where price had changed trend from. A more effective way would be looking at it pivoted from. Right? You need to identify the waves. If the pivot points are not clear, go to a higher content frame. Now, what we mean by this is if I want to plot my fish, I would definitely need to plot my fish from this swing high, sorry, low to this high. I cannot plot my fish from an in-between swing point to the high. Or if I'm looking at fish level from here, I cannot plot it from an in-between swing point down to this low to give me levels of resistance. Now, identifying the pivot point or the swing point is important. You can visually identify the places from where price pivots from. Right? Would I take this as a pivot point as far as we are concerned? Let's just zoom this inside. I would not. The reason why I'm going through this difference is this is an in-between point. Where did price change trend from? Can we see it clearly? The simple fact is, if a five-year-old can see a trend, it is a trend, and if you can identify it, then that is what it is. Right? So identify the swing points. If I was looking at this down wave, let's have a look at this down wave. I want you to trade this wave towards the upside. I will plot my fits from this swing high to this swing low. I cannot plot it from in between levels. It's wrong. It will give me the wrong picture. Right? So visually identify the swing points. On the daily platform, I can identify this is a swing point. This is a swing point. This is a place where price has pivoted from. Do I identify this as a swing point? For the time being, I can. I can say, okay, this is one. But if you stretch behind, you have one more lower level. Now, if you cannot see it clearly on this time frame, always go one time frame higher. On one time frame higher, this is what we are looking What is my swing point? This becomes my swing point. You getting my point? This is your swing point. Now, if on the weekly time frame, I need to plot my fits, I'm going to be plotting my fib ratios from this swing low up to this swing high to give me expected levels of support over here. So every time frame can give you a different fib level. The best way, of course, is to align the different time frames. But just as an example, this is what you must look for. Right? So swing points. So you cannot plot fib ratios from the points in the middle of the wave. The third important thumb rule is you must always plot the fibs on the wicks or the candles. And if you're looking for support resistance, on the support resistance, you consider the real body. All right, now what does that mean? Simply means that if, once again, if I zoom this in, let's take into example the current wave, right? Let's forget about this for the time being. If I need to plot my fibs, I'm going to be plotting my Fibonacci ratios from the wick of this candle to the wick of the low. I cannot plot my fibs from the real body of the candle down to the real body because you're ignoring the wick. Now, if you go down to a lower term time frame, this wick is a price movement. Price has been there, it's visited there. We must encompass the entire price movement to give us the correct fib ratios. On the other hand, if we are looking for levels of support resistance, we need to look at the real bodies. We'll come down to this point once we start with the fibs. All right. 